All right, and with that, I want to bring up Dietram Schifele, uh, who is a member of uh, our organizing committee and a distinguished professor in science communication at the University of Wisconsin-Madison uh, at the uh, Moorgridge Institute for Research. And uh, Dietram has the challenging task of summarizing the day. Uh, and with that, Dietram, over to you. Thank you, Ashley. Um, I, I mostly have a list here, so I know who to thank after I've done a, a quick summary. But I, I, I want to spend just a couple minutes actually not summarizing, but talking a little bit about next steps, because this is our, our third Sackler Colloquium on the science of science communication. And I think um, we heard, we spent two days talking about a lot of challenges, challenges that we haven't heard for the first time that we certainly talked about in the past. Um, some of them new, and it was nice that we ended up um, with a last question on weaponized gene drives, just to send us all off into a land of risk and, and worry, but, but I think we've also heard about a lot of exciting things going on. Um, about all, I think this, this Sackler has had more funders in attendance, uh, thanks to uh, a lot of work at the front end by Elizabeth Christofferson and, and bringing folks together and a lot of goodwill on the fund side of the funders. And, and I, think third, I think we heard a lot of examples of projects that are currently funded and that are ongoing and that are producing exciting uh, exciting results. Um, I think we, we talked a lot about the best ways of communicating science to people and information and uncertainty, and that's important. Uh, but I think we also heard a lot about the need to have broader conversations where science is informed by considerations that maybe science itself doesn't always think about, um, or by considerations that are not scientific in nature, that are, that are ethical, that are moral, that are societal in nature. And, and certainly a lot of the uh, the, the panels on, on, uh, on science in the news have, have, I think, highlighted that quite nicely. Um, after this meeting, I think um, there, there'll be a number of next steps, um, and I just want to mention a few of them that are ongoing because I think they'll be interesting to, to be on your radar. A number of you have been involved already in discussions that uh, DBAS has had here within the academies um, uh, about in, in, in institutionalizing some of the things, some of the recommendations that have come out of the report that all of you looked at, um, thinking about the, the role that the academy can play in, in bringing and being a convener on some of these efforts um, and helping maybe other organizations with some of these efforts. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And for those of you who have provided imp uh, input on that, thank you so much. Uh, there, there's. Um, a mapping exercise going on uh, that Brooke Smith and, and the folks at Cavley are, are, are centrally spearheading. Um, and I think uh, I, I can't say too much more about it because A, I don't know all that much, and B, I think it's still in development. Um, but it sounds really, really um, excited, exciting. And I, and I think we've, we've heard uh, among the funders already very interesting discussions that will help us um, as a field move forward. And I think that was at the very beginning when we first started thinking about the Sackler Colloquium and the science of colloquia, as it turned out, on the science of science communication. That was the intention, uh, to really galvanize a field and, and galvanize a new way of thinking. So with that being said, um, I, do wanna, I do wanna thank uh, uh, everybody here, certainly for, I think, a, a great uh, two days of, of discussions, of questions, of pushing um, against and, and, and in favor of ideas. Uh, also online um, for in the Twitter conversations, the humor, the snark, um, and for making me completely self-conscious about my shoes for the rest of my <laughs> life. Um, just want to point that out. Um, the funders, one more time, without whom none of this would have been possible. Um, uh, and uh, and uh, if you if you run into any of them, um, um, uh, please do convey that from all of us. Um, maybe most importantly, the staff. Um, here in the building, the staff behind the scenes, the staff who've made online possible everything. Please join me in, in, in thanking them. Um, Marty Perot, of course, who um, has pushed us in during every break, who has emailed all of us 50 times, who's pushed us to get slides together, uh, who has held all the pieces together um, in the end. So thank you, Marty. Um, I don't know where she is, actually, but thank you so much. Um, and then I have, I have two people who I want to thank in particular. One is Ashley, if you wouldn't mind coming up one more time. Uh, we have a small token of appreciation for you. Thank you very so, much. Thank you so much, Ashley. Um, and then if I could ask Barbara Klein-Pope to come on stage um, just uh, briefly. 
So, so in 2011, um, Barbara called me up and asked me if I was interested in, in helping with this thing, um, this colloquium that they were planning on the science of, of science communication. Um, and I think since then, Barbara has been the heart, the soul, the brain of this whole thing. I think she's been behind every big idea that we've had, and I think she's been behind every detail, including the music. So for those of us who may have mocked the music, um, <laughs> apologies. Um, but, um, but I think, I, I think it's safe to say, on, on behalf of all the organizers, uh, Karen Cook, Brooke Fischoff, um, Alan Leshner, who described himself earlier as the pretty face of the group, um, I think it's safe to say that uh, without Barbara, none of this would have happened. And she's leaving the Academy, or she has left, unfortunately, the Academy after 34 years. For those of you who don't know, so this will be her very last sacral colloquium, um, even if there is going to be another one. Um, so it's the end of an era. So we really thought long and hard about what to do, and Marty called Andy Pope, um, her husband, um, to see what we could do. And he said that, you know, how can we stay in her life on a fairly permanent basis? That was the key question. And so. Um, the idea was that we could get her coffee mugs that every morning when she travels um, would take with her. So we had three coffee mugs made with, a, with the artwork from the three sacral colloquia, one, two, and three. So that every morning, hopefully, when you get in your car, Barbara, um, you're going to have those with you. So thank you so much from all of us, and most certainly for me. Thank you. So, so that leaves me um, just to... Um, yeah, thank you one more time, Barbara. Safe travels, everybody, and um, we'll connect with all of you before too long. Thank you.